All right, good morning, Hope Church. You guys are getting too quiet, so let's change that. Would you please stand as we praise our Lord with our voices raised? Delighted to know that no matter who we are, no matter where we're from, no matter where we think we're going, he says, come with me. One, two, one, two, three, four. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa. He came for the sinner and the least of these. He came for the stranger. He came for you and me. There is no holding back. There is no holding back. He came for the lonely. He came for the lost, he came for the captive and paid the ransom cost. There is no holding back, there is no holding back. He never said run, he never said hide, he never said I don't have the time. He never said stop, turn around, no not right now. He never said see me when you get it right. Till then just get back in line No, it's hard to believe He said, hey you, come with me Whoa, whoa, whoa Whoa, whoa, whoa He came for the cheater With the wicked heart Came for the rejected Said it's time for a new start There is no holding back there is no holding back He never said run, he never said hide He never said I don't have the time He never said stop, turn around hell No, not right now He never said see me when you get it right Till then just get back in line No, it's hard to believe He said hey you, come with me Whoa, whoa, whoa Separating us from Him whoa, whoa, whoa. Just knocking He'll open the door to let you in whoa, 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 whoa. Victory is here, so let your new life begin whoa, 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 whoa. He never said run, he never said hide, he never said I don't have the time He never said stop, turn around, no not right now He never said see me when you get it right, till then just get back in line No, 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 he never said run, he never said hide, he never said I don't have the time He never said stop, turn around, no not right now he never said, see me when you get it right Till then just get back in line No, it's hard to believe He said, hey you, come with me Whoa, 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 whoa Whoa, 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 whoa. right he looked right at you he's looking at you right now and he's saying come with me he's not telling you to, to go back in line it's not like the DMV you didn't get the, the paperwork wrong there's no wrong you just come to him he's made it right he's rescued us and he's freed us from the things that we try to convince ourselves should keep us from him but truly all those walls have come down one two one two Three, four. There is good news for the captive, good news for the shame. There is good news for the one who walked away. There is good news for the doubter. 
the one religion failed for the good lord has come to seek and save he's our rescuer he's our rescuer we are free from sin forevermore oh how sweet the sound oh how grace abounds we will praise the Lord, our Rescuer. He is beauty for the blind man, riches for the poor. He is friendship for the one the world ignores. He is pasture for the weary, rest for those who strive. Yes, the good Lord is the way, the truth, the life. Yes, the good Lord is the way, the truth, the life. He's our rescuer. He's our rescuer. We are free from sin forevermore. Oh, how sweet the sound. Oh, how grace abounds. We will praise the Lord, our rescuer. He's our rescuer. He's our rescuer. We are free from sin forevermore. Oh, how sweet the sound. Oh, how grace abounds. We will praise the Lord, our rescuer. Come and be chainless. Come and be fearless. Come to the foot of Calvary. There is redemption from every affliction here at the foot of Calvary. Come and be chainless. Come and be fearless. Come to the foot of Calvary. There is redemption from every affliction here at the foot of Calvary. He's our rescuer. He's our rescuer. We are free from sin forevermore. Oh, how sweet the sound. Oh, how grace abounds. We will praise the Lord, our Rescuer. We will praise the Lord, our Rescuer. Let's pray. Oh God, in the midst of the many voices that crush our spirit and deny our calling, voices that say, who do you think you are? We come to hear your voice of affirmation. We come to hear your voice calling us to be and do what you have called us to be and do. Let this time of worship quiet our fears, soothe our bruised souls, and energize us for ministry in your beloved world. Let faith abide. Let hope abide. Let love abide. Here in this sanctuary, here in our community, here in our world, but most of all, here in us. Through Christ we pray. Amen. Amen. Let somebody know that you're glad they're here today. Invite our children to come on up and uh, join us for the children's message. Mm. Well, good morning, good morning, everyone. So, those of you who can read, what does this say? Courage. Courage. What does it mean? Brave, okay. Strength. strength, yeah, good. Brave, strength, okay. If, if you were, um, 
If you were a superhero, how would you show courage? What would you do? By taking out the garbage. <laughs> Take note of that, Mom. <laughs> Very courageous there. Henry? <laughs> yes? Saving people. Saving people from a fire. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Superman would do that. Spider-Man, you know, all those guys who would, would probably, uh, you know, come to the rescue, right? And, and help somebody who was in trouble. Well, there, there's an animal that has a reputation for courage. Do you know what it is? What animal it might be in here? Yeah. Do, you, do you think? Should we look? Yeah. 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 You sure? Yeah. All right. Well, a lion. a lion. That's right. Yeah, we often talk about lions as. Uh, well, that's a good question. Why would a lion wear a heart right under, like almost like a necklace? Why? What do you think he would do that? It's almost Valentine's Day, of course. Yeah, very good answer. Really courageous. Yes, very courageous. And where does courage come from? Your heart. Your heart. That's right. It, it's uh, it comes from the heart. And uh, sometimes people who are courageous are still afraid, right? But they overcome um, the, their fears and they do something that's very, very brave. Now it's interesting that in the Bible, do do you know? That Jesus is called a lion? It's true. In the book of Revelation, he, it calls Jesus the Lion of Judah. And why would, why would some Bible writer call Jesus a lion? Was, was Jesus ever brave? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. What, what's one brave thing that Jesus did for us? He sacrificed himself. Yeah, think of that going to a cross to save us from our sins, you know, pay the price for our sins. That takes a lot of bravery, right? I mean, that is, wow. And so, you know, Jesus is, uh, we call him our master. He's the one that we try to be like, right? Because we're, we're disciples, you know, a disciple of Jesus is somebody who tries to be like Jesus, right? And do the things that Jesus does. And so Jesus was brave. How, are, how can we be brave as his followers? What are some things we can do to show that we have courage because we're followers of Jesus? Yeah. Trust in him. Yeah, trust in him, right? So uh, those times when we're worried and afraid, you know, to trust in him and, and uh, find peace in those times. Maybe there's some times uh, we're facing certain things. It's kind of scary. But uh, knowing that Jesus is with us, does that help? Yeah, it really gives us courage. So uh, let's, uh, let's bow our heads and thank God and ask God uh, to help us to be courageous like Jesus. Um, let's pray. Dear Jesus, thank you that uh, you showed such tremendous courage by going to the cross for us. Uh, Lord, there's many things we'll be asked to do in our lives as we follow you. Hopefully it won't be a cross, but there may be other things where we, we're going to need your courage um, to, be, uh, to make right decisions, to, uh, to be good examples for others. And uh, Lord, we just pray that you'd give us hearts like yours, hearts that are full of courage, uh, so that people will know through that that we're doing the right thing, but we're doing it because we follow Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for showing us how to be courageous and uh, help us to follow you. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. We've got Sunday school and godly play today. Well, good morning, Hope Church. It's great to see y'all here as always. There's my little southern accent again creeping in. Um, it is good to see you all. Welcome. Um, I don't think I see any visitors out there today, so we will... Do we have a visitor? Okay. If you're visiting with us, 
We're glad you're here. Thank you so much for coming. Um, and now that you've been pointed out, we're not going to ask you to stand up or anything like that. But what we will ask you to do is take a second. There's a um, yellow card in the pew rack in front of you. And if you just take a second, fill that out and um, drop it in the plate when it comes by. We would be very appreciative. We will send you a little note. We will not come calling on you. Um, we will not bother you any more than that. Um, but we do want to um, express our appreciation for you being here. And we do indeed hope that your um, time in worship with us is a blessing as much as your presence is a blessing to us. So um, welcome. We're glad you're here. Um, I have a few announcements to make. Oh, I forgot to say hi to the people online. Good morning, people online. Um, it's great that you're here with us as well. And if you um, want to just drop a comment on Facebook and let us know you're out there, that would be great too. So a few announcements I want to make sure that uh, we go over. Um, FPU, Financial Peace University, started Wednesday night, this past Wednesday. Um, there's a Looks like a pretty good group of people in that um, class, but there's room for a couple more always. And um, so if you are interested or know someone who is interested, um, there's still time. Um, you can make that first class up, no problem. And we would love to have you um, stop in. Um, if you're still on the um, fence, you can always stop in and try out a class. If you don't think it's for you, that's okay. Um, but it is a life-changing um, event if you can... Um, get there. So we would certainly um, encourage you to do so. A um, couple other things here I just want to highlight from your bulletin. Um, Monday the 18th, that's not tomorrow, but the following Monday, um, the United Methodist Women will be having their uh, meeting at 7 o'clock in the conference room. And um, our own um, former director of discipleship, Ann Ebert, who is now with Cherry Street Mission, will be talking about the mission. So um, you are all welcome, and as I said first service, my understanding is you don't have to be a lady to um, go to United Methodist Women. Just um, go, and um, you can hear Ann talk, and then you can leave before the business part of the meeting, um, so you don't have to deal with all of that um, lady stuff if you're a man. So, um, Family Fun Night, that is going to be um, the 23rd of February. A couple weeks from yesterday at 5.30 to 7.30, and we're going to be having games here. We're going to have the gym opened up. Uh, we're going to have something for someone to do, no matter what your age is. Um, so we would love to have you here. Um, we're going to have pizza and drinks, but um, if you would bring a salad or dessert to share, that would be wonderful. And um, again, that's for families of all ages. So. Um, the last thing I want to make sure I hit you with is um, our Hope on the Go for February will be two weeks from today on the 24th. Um, from 1.30 to 3, we will be going out to Otterbein Assisted Living, and we're just going to spend some time with the residents out there and just, um, you know, sp spread the love of God. So um, we would appreciate it if you would um, be willing to take a few hours, a couple hours out of your day um, and go uh, just brighten the day for someone else. There's a sign-up sheet out in the fellowship hall over the drinking fountain. So we would love to have you come with us for that as well. Um, that's it for the announcements. I believe Kathy Bethel would like to talk to you at this point about our mission of the month. Good morning, everyone. So it's time for the school bell to ring again. Maybe not here at Hope, but uh, down at the Toledo Freedom School, which is our mission of the month for February. Um, we've sponsored or given to them the past couple of years. So just a little review of them um, and what they stand for and why, why it even exists. Um, they say that children who do not have access to books over the summer lose ground at a rate of three times faster than children who have access to books. By high school, children who do not have access to books over the summer are reading at three reading grades below children who do have access to books. And Freedom School exists to address that issue. Uh, so it started two years ago. Uh, this is their third summer, and uh, they're very excited to announce that they are actually adding a new class this year. So there will be 10 additional students who will get to attend and experience um, everything that they get to do. Not only do they do reading, but they have outside um, activities that they do, um, such as uh, gardening, singing, <laughs> dancing, acting, Tai Chi. So there's a wide variety of things that children get to experience. 
Um, the Freedom Schools were first brought about um, as a vision to what is known as the Cradle to Prison Pipeline, um, and they began back in 1995. So I have to tell you, it, education excites me, okay? So this is one I'm really super excited about. We do have a short video we would like to show you um, in regards to Freedom School. They play all summer and they may not pick up a book until it's time to go back to school. And so what Freedom School is trying to do is bridge that gap. What we've learned with Freedom School is that when children are here every day reading books and writing and doing uh, different kinds of learning activities, that they not only don't fall behind, they often gain ground. My grandson did enjoy reading, but I see with the Freedom School now, I'm beginning to find books in his bed. So he's going to bed reading now. And that's exciting to me. And I'm sure if it's happening in my home with my grandson, it is also happening with other parents and grandparents as well. Every morning, the children participate in Harambe, which is this opening circle time. And they sing a song called Something Inside So Strong. They're going to sing this song 30 times this summer. And after they sing this song, they do these cheers and chants, which are all about getting them excited about reading and learning. But what I've noticed is that this song and these chants have become liturgy for these children, which means these are words that they are internalizing. They are becoming true about themselves. They're internalizing them not only in their minds, but in their hearts. They're putting their little arms up and saying that they're going to be strong. And whatever happens in this world, I'm still going to be strong because it is being instilled into me to be that way and to make this world a better place to live. We couldn't have Freedom School without the Monroe United Methodist Church and the Mommy Watershed District. There would, there would be no Freedom School and all the Methodist churches that have bought into this and who have planted a seed, whether it be their time in volunteering or whether it be the checks that they've written to make sure that we were able to cover the cost to be a Freedom School. In the United Methodist Church, not one congregation can do any and all of this ministry alone and do it well. But when we come together as congregation to congregation, regardless of size, whether it's the smallest church in which there's only 15 people in worship, and we have churches of that size who have participated, to the largest church where there is 800 people in worship, together um, we have made a difference, and that's because in our connectional way of giving, we can make tremendous difference in people's lives. And I'm thrilled, and Reverend Oki, we are thrilled with the Mommy Water district churches and the way in which they have come together to make this Freedom School a possibility here at Monroe Street Neighborhood Center. So I hope that you notice in there the smiles on the children's faces. Um, ladies and gentlemen, you helped do that. Last year, um, your giving uh, raised over $4,000. It's $1,000 per student to go, and the parents are never asked for any money. So all students who attend um, receive scholarships, and you were able to, uh, to donate or to give enough for four students to go. Now, normally, um, you, uh, Reverend Ray Lynch Life comes in to do the presentation. Uh, she wasn't available today, so you get me, but here's the thing. I may not have as much clout as she does, but I'm going to put out the same challenge to you. Last year, she challenged us to be able to, to uh, provide scholarships for four students, and I would love to see Hope to be able to do that again this year. So, you know, we appreciate all the giving you do every single month to our Mission of the Month. But what I would like to ask is this month, consider those smiles, consider the joy that this brings to the children and how it's furthering their future, and maybe give a little extra this month. We'll kind of keep you updated as to where we are um, throughout the month as to how many children we have been able to provide scholarships for, all right, to see uh, if we can, in fact, do this. Thank you very much. Thank you, Kathy. One of the um, great blessings of worshiping together is the time we um, are able to spend lifting one another up in prayer, um, sharing our concerns, um, sharing um, those triumphs in our lives. So um, it is a time um, for us to share our joys and concerns. And um, if you have a joy or concern, 
um, please raise your, raise your hand. An usher will come by with the microphone. Um, please stand up and tell us your name and what we can pray for. Good morning, Linda Hunt. I have two concerns today. The first is my sister-in-law, Jennifer Hans. Um, she's had pancreatic cancer for two years. They did surgery first, and they thought they got it all. Well, it's back with vengeance, and they've given her about six to nine months. Um, the other one is our own Cindy Guskey. She is having a terrible time right now controlling her insulin. Um, <clears throat> of course, you all know she's got cancer, which doesn't help at all, but her insulin is just out of control. So if you could keep her in your prayers, she I know she would appreciate it. Thank you. If there are no others, we'll ask Pastor Tom to lead us in prayers for God's people. Sometimes when we uh, pray on our own, it um, kind of helps us to give form to our prayers by, uh, by following kind of an outline. And um, kind of a classic one is the, the prayer outline of ACTS, which stands for uh, Adoration, Confession, Thanksgiving, and Supplication. And so this morning as we pray together, uh, that's kind of going to shape our, our prayer together today. So let's pray. Oh God, we do come to you and uh, we begin with our adorations, our, our praise of you. And, and our hearts, Lord, are filled with uh, uh, the testimony of Scripture that, uh, that uh, gives us uh, the uh, attributes that, uh, that are yours. You are a Lord of uh, power and greatness. And yet, Lord, you are also a power, a God of uh, great love, um, not only for the crowd, but for each of us as individuals. And we thank you, Lord, for that steadfast light, love that is the foundation <clears throat> of all that we do in, in life. Uh, Lord, we, uh, we pause to confess to you that uh, there are times when we forget how loved we are and how, uh, how much, Lord, that uh, you are looking out for us. And we become fearful. We become hesitant. We, uh, we shrink back from opportunities. And uh, we just confess to you, Lord, for our lack of faith when it comes to those times, uh, knowing that uh, you have proven yourself uh, time and again. Uh, to be uh, the one that um, is always there for us. And so, uh, Lord, we, along with that confession, we, we also confess our, our personal sins uh, from this past week, uh, remembering your promise that uh, if we confess our sins, that you are faithful and just uh, to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Thank you, Lord, for this promise. And Lord, we give you our, uh, our thanksgiving uh, for the times that, uh, that we have uh, been down and you have uh, come to our side, uh, times when uh, things looked hopeless, but Lord, you made a way, a possibility, and, uh, and Lord, uh, we thank you for how many times you've blessed us with, uh, with answers to our prayers that uh, we just didn't even see coming but uh there you were lord uh, acting in your own way in your own time and uh so it is with deep thanks for these answered prayers that we pray today and now lord we lift to you our supplications those things we need those things we um ask for and uh lord we uh we do so on behalf of others today um, those in our church family. And Lord, you've heard the sharing that's been done, and so we do lift up uh, Jennifer Hunt in uh, her battle with this uh, pancreatic cancer. Uh, we lift up Cindy Guskey and her um, um, 
issues with her insulin. Uh, we lift up Tyler Yoder, Lord, in his uh, struggles with health. Um, we, we lift up to you other um, personal needs and requests that we have in our hearts right now. Lord, hear them as we lift them silently before you. Lord, we pray also today for the Freedom School, for all the uh, preparations that are already beginning, for the children that, uh, Lord, you already have in mind for, uh, for help and uh, growth through that program. Uh, we pray for uh, the ministries here at Hope Church. We pray for our Sunday school children right now that are uh, learning and growing, and we thank you and pray for the teachers that are leading them right now. Uh, Lord, we pray for our United Methodist Church as we uh, approach our time of uh, special general conference. We pray that your spirit would guide the delegates uh, in the way that you would have us to go. We pray now, Lord, for, uh, for ourselves and for what you have uh, on your mind for us, Lord. Um, guide us in your ways and uh, keep us uh, focused on your son Jesus in, in all things. Uh, so we, we pray this prayer, Lord, all of it in Jesus' name. Amen. <coughs> We have been called to speak and to live out the radical, abiding love of God in the world. We do so by offering all that we are, all that we do, and all that we have, knowing that God will use us and our gifts to bring people to his transforming love. We invite our ushers to come and gather our gifts. One, two, three, four. Broken dreams and promises, things I shouldn't have done. I knew the difference between right and wrong. I chose the wrong one. I'm sorry for my actions. I'm sorry for the shame. Release me from the guilt I feel. Let me trust in your name. I am free. I am free by your grace and glory you have released me I am free I am free I am free by your love and mercy you have released me No more looking backwards My past is dead and gone Forever starts today, my friend Follow the Holy Son Help me with the answers Keep me straight and strong To follow your ways, your truth, your love Jesus is the one I am free I am free by your grace and glory you have released me I am free I am free I am free by your love and mercy you have released me
free by your grace and glory you have released me i am free i am free i am free by your love and mercy you have released me you have forgiven me you have set me Pray with me, please. Gracious and loving God, receive our gifts of self and substance. They have belonged to you since our very beginning. We give them freely, joyfully, prayerfully. With them, we praise you. With them, we celebrate the great power of your love in the world. In Jesus' name, amen. One. you still haven't heard come to me whoever you are because I am the God of a many shaped heart
comes from the Old Testament, the book of Jeremiah, um, chapter 1, verses 4 through 10. The word of the Lord came to me, saying, Before I formed formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. Alas, sovereign Lord, I said, I do not know how to speak. I am too young. But the Lord said to me, Do not say, I am too young. You must go to everyone I send you to and say whatever I command you. Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you and will rescue you, declares the Lord. Then the Lord reached out his hand and touched my mouth and said to me, I have put my words in your mouth. See, today I appoint you over nations and kingdoms to uproot and tear down, to destroy and overthrow, to build and to plant. Our second reading comes from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 4, verses 21 through 30. He began by saying to them, Today the scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. All spoke well of him and were amazed at the gracious words that came from his lips. Isn't this Joseph's son, they asked? Jesus said to them, Surely you will quote this proverb to me, Physician, heal yourself, and you will tell me, Do hear in your hometown what we have heard that you did in Capernaum. Truly I tell you, he continued, no prophet is accepted in his hometown. I assure you that there were many widows in Israel in Elijah's time, when the sky was shut for three and a half years, and there was a severe famine throughout the land. Yet Elijah was not sent to any of them, but to a widow in Zarephath in the region of Sidon. And there were many in Israel with leprosy in the time of Elisha, the prophet, yet not one of them was cleansed. Only Naaman, the Syrian. All the people in the synagogue were furious when they heard this. They got up, drove him out of the town, and took him to the brow of the hill on which the town was built in order to throw him off the cliff. But he walked right through the crowd and went on his way. Well, so far in our journey through the season of Epiphany, that word that means to show or to reveal, Jesus has been revealed to us through the scriptures in a variety of ways. On the day of Epiphany, we read the the story about the visit of the Magi, and in that story, Jesus was revealed as the King of Glory, 
who is worthy of our worship and worthy of the best that we have to give. And then we traveled to the Jordan River where Jesus was baptized and the booming voice of his heavenly father proclaimed, you are my son whom I, be- I love. And here we see Jesus also revealed as the one who calls us by name and through baptism and claims us as his own. Next, we went to a wedding in Cana of Galilee, and there Jesus was revealed as, to us as the Savior who wants to be a part of every part of our lives, the good and the difficult times. We also saw him revealed as the, the Lord of compassion and the Lord of surprising outcomes. And last Sunday, the good news about Jesus was revealed in the words of Isaiah that Jesus read as he stood in front of the crowd in his hometown synagogue in Nazareth. Isaiah spoke of a Savior who would come to deliver the poor, the captive, the blind, and the oppressed. In other words, all of us. Today our reading from the Gospel of Luke starts out where last Sunday's left off. Jesus has just read that passage from Isaiah, which went, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord." And when Jesus finished reading, he handed that scroll to the attendant and he sat down to teach as all the rabbis did. A hush fell over the synagogue and all eyes were upon him. And then he began by saying, today this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. Now, again, remember, Jesus was speaking in his hometown. Some of the people in the crowd remembered him as as a little ankle biter running around the streets of uh, Nazareth. They watched him grow up through childhood and adolescence and into adulthood. You know, I, I got a small taste of what that would be like when I was appointed to, to be the pastor of Macomb United Methodist Church, which was the, in the same school district in which I grew up. It was, had been 19 years since I had moved away from that community, and yet some of them still remembered me as a goofy teenager who hung out with their sons and had crushes on their daughters. Uh, It took some time for some of them to get their heads wrapped around the fact that this kid they knew was now their pastor. And it probably didn't help that I was still goofy, but uh, it's beside the point. So I, uh, I appreciate the, the predicament that Jesus was in speaking to his hometown crowd here. And yet even after dropping the bombshell in verse 21 that he, Jesus, was the fulfillment of the one that Isaiah was referring to in his prophecy, the scripture indicates that they were still impressed by him. Verse 22 starts out, all spoke well of him and were amazed at the gracious words that came from his lips. But then at the end of the verse, the tenor of the passage begins to change a bit. There are at least some people in the crowd saying, now, wait a minute, isn't this Joseph's kid? And the implied question after that was, where did he learn all this stuff? So although there was some pride in the hometown boy made good, there was also a good bit of skepticism floating through the building that day. Now, it seems to me that Jesus could have taken two different paths um, at this point on that occasion. He could have wrapped up his message, shaken a few hands at the door, and just gone his way, you know, leaving those hometown folks a little mystified about where he learned all this stuff, but feeling good about the fact that their hometown boy was out there representing his lineage very well. I mean, apparently, most of them really didn't fully comprehend comprehend his message to this point anyway, judging by the fact that they didn't go ballistic right away when Jesus self-identified himself as the Messiah that Isaiah was talking about, you know? And so, you know, those, some of those folks could have left happy with that looks that says, you know, I have no idea what you were talking about, Pastor, but you said it very well. I'm very familiar with that look. <laughs> 
Or Jesus could have gone down the more risky path of further revealing who he really was and the true nature of what God's mission was for him on earth. Well, in a move that revealed the tremendous courage of our Savior, Jesus chose the latter option. Jesus knew that there were some people in the crowd that were already kind of upset that he had already gone to the village of Capernaum and had performed a number of healing miracles there. It had gained Jesus a lot of notoriety in that region. And I can imagine some of the Nazareth folks saying things like, you know, why couldn't he have done that right here in good old Nazareth? You know, that kind of stuff attracts people. It might have been good for business. Well, Jesus knew the scuttlebutt going around. And so he said to them in his message that, that day in the synagogue, surely you will quote this proverb to me, physician, heal yourself. And you will tell me, do here in your hometown what we have heard you did in Capernaum. In other words, they were saying, hey, Jesus, you know, charity begins at home. Do some of those miracles for us. After all, we're like family to you. If God gave you some mysterious new powers that we deserve the benefits of them. But evidently Jesus sensed their cynicism and disbelief, and so he said to them, Truly I say to you, no prophet is accepted in his hometown. And not only did Jesus not humor them with a miracle, he went on to remind them of two examples in the Old Testament when God bypassed Jewish people completely with miracles and gave them to Gentiles, that is, non-Jews, instead. Thus, Jesus was announcing that the good news he came to proclaim to the world was that God's love and grace were greater than anything they could have imagined. His blessings and salvation were for the Jewish people, but they were also for everyone else as well. Well, believe me, saying this in a room full of Jewish men who believed that they had a monopoly on God and his blessings did not go over very well. The Jews were were so sure of this at this time in their history that that they alone were God's people and that they that they other utterly despised all other people. He uh They believed that God had created Gentiles, in fact, just as fuel for the fires of hell. And here was this young Jesus, whom they all knew, preaching as if Gentiles were equally favored by God. It was outrageous. Well, the people were incensed. So much so that they grabbed Jesus and they threw him out of the synagogue. And they were still so mad at him, they threw him out of their village. And they were still so mad after that, they took him to the brow of a cliff just outside of town. They were going to throw him over the edge of that. And then the scripture says this amazing thing happened. It says, but he walked right through the crowd and went on his way. Man, can you picture it? Hundreds of angry men, faces red, shaking their fists, shouting threats and epitaphs, ready to kill this brash upstart of a preacher for daring to suggest that God would love anyone other than their own kind. And yet no one could do it. Apparently the the moral majesty of Jesus' bearing was just so awesome that no one could stand step up and push him over that edge. I imagine a hush fell through the crowd at this point and Jesus began slowly walking through that crowd, looking deeply into the eyes of those who stood in his way, into the eyes of people he knew, people he had grown up with, looking deeply until their eyes dropped in shame and they gave him room to pass by. Holy boldness, that's what it was. That confidence that you have in God that blossoms into courage when God has something special for you to do. Well, Jeremiah in the Old Testament knew what that holy boldness was all about. 
called at a young age to deliver an unpopular message of forthcoming doom to a nation that didn't want to hear it. Jeremiah was petrified. And his first response to God's call was, but, but, but God, you know, I, I don't know how to speak. I'm only a youth. And God said, Jeremiah, don't say I'm too young. You must go to everyone to whom I send you and say whatever I command you. Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you and will rescue you. Wow, you know, if God ever said something like that to you or me, you know, we could have a little holy boldness in our lives too, couldn't we? Couldn't we? Well, guess what? He, he, he really did. He, he said it through his son, Jesus. Jesus said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always to the close of the age. So according to this passage, what's the basis for our holy boldness? Well, it's being sent out by Christ's authority to do Christ's work with the promise of Christ's presence with us always. So how's that working for you? Could you, use, could you use a little more holy boldness in your life? Well, this week when I was, I was racking my brain for a story from my own life where I, I could kind of tell you how, how I had shown that kind of courageous faith that Jesus exhibited in, in my life. And I'm really sorry to say that I could think of a lot more instances when I was a holy chicken than when I showed holy boldness. And then I remember this book that we had at home that um, it, it's called Jesus Freaks. And it contains story after story from a, an organization called The Voice of the Martyrs. And, um, you know, incredible stories of courageous faith, many of which uh, ended sadly, but triumphantly. As Christians faced torture and imprisonment and loss of family and homes and livelihood and faced death itself in horrid ways rather than renounce their faith in Christ. And after sitting there reading dozens of these stories, I realized even more you know, how much I need that sense of authority and mandate and the presence of Christ if I'm ever going to follow that incredible courage that Jesus modeled for us to follow as his disciples. Michael Tate, originally part of the Christian group DC Talk, uh, wrote in this book, he said, our mission may not involve hanging on a cross, being jailed, or being burned at the stake here in America. But we have other more invisible obstacles. Ours is a society built by pride, materialism, and dedication to the status quo. In a world built on free will instead of God's will, we must be the freaks. While we may be, not be called to martyr our lives, we must martyr our way of life. We must put our selfish ways to death and march to a different beat. Then the world will see Jesus. I mean, all of us need that holy boldness that Jesus showed us in our scripture story today and the one that he showed even more in his unwavering journey to a cruel cross to win our salvation. I mean, we need his boldness to stand up for what we believe, even when it's unpopular, even when we're going to get criticized for it. And in this culture in which we live, we, you, we can count on being criticized. We need his boldness to stand up for those who can't stand up for themselves. We need his boldness to get involved and not just sit on the sideline and criticize like a spectator would. 
We need His boldness to, to get our hands dirty and our backs tired and maybe even our noses bloodied a bit. We need His boldness to resist temptation, knowing that God's power is available to, us, to help us and not just our own. We need His boldness to try to overcome our fear of failure and our feelings of not being adequate. We need His boldness to let it be know that, known that we are Christians. And, and not by some self-righteous demeanor, but, but by our love and our kindness and our good works and our willingness to say that all of these things we give in the name of Jesus. Holy boldness, that's what we need. Courage from above, rooted in God's love. May God grant it. And friends, may each of us seek it. Let's pray together. Now, usually when I pray after a message, I do all the talking, but today it's going to be up to you. I just wanted you to consider a few questions as you pray silently to the Lord. Is there a need for holy boldness in your life? Is there a situation that, uh, that you've just gone along with because you didn't want to make waves, but you know it isn't right, and you know you ought to say something or do something? Is there someone that God has been nudging you to talk to or to reach out to, but you've been resisting? Is there something in your walk with Christ that the Holy Spirit has has been wanting you to do in the area of service that would stretch you, but you haven't gotten up the courage yet to try? Is there a habit or attitude in your life that is hurting your witness for Christ that you need the courage to address? Maybe it's an attitude of indifference or impatience. Maybe you've developed a critical spirit toward others. But just take a moment to ask the Lord for some holy boldness in your life to address whatever the Spirit directs your attention to this morning. And I invite you to do that now as, as we pray in silence. Lord Jesus, you are the master. We are your disciples. We want to be like you in all things. We see your amazing courage. And we want to be like you. Lord Jesus, do a great work within us. Transform us from people who are fearful and reluctant, who are turned inward, to those who have been called to boldness in this world. And may all of it be shown not through our own veracity, not through our own power, but, uh, Lord, through your love that flows through us. Give us your holy boldness. In your name we pray. Amen. Friends, would you please stand as we get ready to sing our closing song?
remembering that when it comes time to be bold, God's placed within us the same power that perform miracles and change this world forever. It lives within us. He is within us. One, two, three, four. I can see the waters raging at my feet. I can feel the breath of those surrounding me. I can hear the sound of nations rising up. We will not be overtaken, we will not be overcome. I can walk down this dark and painful road. I can face every fear of the unknown. I can hear all God's children singing out. We will not be overtaken, we will not be overcome. The same power that rose Jesus from the grave The same power that commands the dead to wake Lives in us, lives in us The same power that moves mountains when He speaks The same power that can calm a raging sea Lives in us lives in us he lives in us lives in us we have hope that his promises are true in his strength there is nothing we can do yes we know there are greater things in store we will not be overtaken we will not be overcome the same power that rose jesus from the grave the same power that commands the dead to wake lives in us lives in us the same power that moves mountains when he speaks the same power that can calm a raging sea lives in us, lives in us. He lives in us, lives in us. Greater is He that is living in me. He's conquered our enemy. The same power that commands the dead to wake lives in us, lives in us. The same power that moves mountains when he speaks. The same power that can calm a raging sea lives in us, lives in us. He lives in us, lives in us. take those powerful hands, take the hands of a neighbor as we sing our benediction. for